His name is YNW Melly, and he's accused of gunning down two friends and then trying to cover it up. Ironically, one of his biggest hits on YouTube is titled Murder on My Mind. I wake up in the morning, I got murder on my mind. Up and coming Florida rapper YNW Melly is now in jail, charged with murdering two men he called his friends. Detectives say the two victims arrived here in this 2018 Jeep, the back windshield appearing to be shot up. Both men pronounced dead. I told him it's too late, my friend, it's time to say goodbye. The shooting actually took place in another location, but they say through forensic evidence, they were able to determine that this crime scene was staged. This case has been in the limelight of news channels ever since the start of the trial on June 12, 2023. And that is not at all surprising. After all, one of the biggest rising stars in music is right at the center of it, YNW Melly. October 26, 2018, I got the worst call of my life that my son was murdered. We know that Chris was a loving person. He didn't deserve this. He was a very sweet boy. So um, I'm just asking everybody to keep me in their prayers, and I want justice for my son. This case is shrouded in lies, false accusations, and mystery. The rapper's supporters and haters alike are being divided by the unknown of what exactly happened in the early hours of October 26, 2018. But in order to understand the present and the future which lies ahead for YNW Melly, we need to go back to the beginning. Jamel Dimmons was born to a single mother on May 1st, 1999. His mother was only 14 years old when she had him. Melly would go on to spend most of his childhood in a disadvantaged area of Gifford, Florida. The rapper's childhood was plagued by financial insecurity as his young mother struggled to pay for housing and basic necessities. Still a young teen, Melly would go on to join the infamous Bloods gang at a young age. At the age of 15, Melly began posting on SoundCloud, the platform which gave him his rise to fame. However, it was also around the same time that the young rapper began having legal troubles. On the 19th of October, 2015, Demons was arrested and charged for the first time. It would not be the last. He was detained on three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and one count of discharging a firearm in public. A teenager has been arrested in Vero Beach after he fired shots near Vero Beach High School. It happened yesterday just before 2.30. Vero Beach police tell us the 16-year-old male pointed a firearm at three other males. Demons had been shooting at some teenagers who were hanging out by Vero Beach High School. He ended up spending a year in jail after which he was released on probation. On June 30th, 2018, Demons was once again arrested. This time, he was charged with possession of marijuana, possession of weapon or ammunition by a convicted felon, and for drug paraphernalia possession. On January 3rd, 2019, he was arrested once again for possession of marijuana. Demons' 2018 and 29 charges were for nonviolent crimes. This would soon change and the worst was yet to come. At the forefront of Dimmons' run-ins with the law, however, his career as a rap artist was flourishing. His music, initially released on SoundCloud during his teenage years, had gone on to attract millions of monthly listeners on Spotify alone. YNW Melly cited his inspiration as all types of music, including Michael Jackson, Chris Brown, and Lil Wayne. Soon, he became known for what music magazines called his mesh of vivid bars about the street alongside vulnerable moments in love. In an interview with Pitchfork, Melly came forward saying that he had mixed personalities, a trait which he would capitalize on his song with Kanye under the same name. Say you want someone. Say you want someone. But Melly went more in depth as to who his multiple personas really were. 
He said, Melvin's not an alter ego. It's a person. I got mixed personalities. It's another person. Melly is a joker. He's just the one that everybody loves, and he loves everybody. Melvin is the one that protect Melly from the wrong people. Soon after the interview, Melly would go on to clarify that he had been diagnosed with both ADHD and bipolar disorder. The song to which much of Melly's fame is attributed, Murder on My Mind, was actually composed during the rapper's first time in prison. I was locked up for the first time. I was like 16, 15. The song saw some success during its initial release in 2018. But the song would go on to skyrocket in early 2019, cracking Hot 100's Top 15. However, it turned out that the reasons behind the song's revival and later success were quite sinister. Melly still turned regardless of what happened this early morning. He's still out here being very positive. Turned still. Hey! <laughs> On February 12, 2019, YNW Melly was charged with two counts of premeditated murder. The victims in the case were 19-year-old Christopher Thomas Jr., who went by YNW Juvie, and 21-year-old Anthony Williams, who went by YNW Sack Chaser. Both were heavily affiliated with Melly in their music careers. Moreover, both victims were close friends of Melly's, having grown up together in Florida. A close friend of the three who chose to remain anonymous spoke on the accusations not long after Melly's arrest. They grew up together and they were like brothers. Melly is a very humble and caring guy, and I don't think he would ever do that to people he called brothers. On the other side, Melvin be getting into Melly, but I don't think it was him the friend said, referring to Dimmon's two distinct personalities. Indeed, murdering two men that Dimmons considered his brothers would be strange, but it was not unheard of. Aware of this, Dimmons made his own statement on social media about the accusations shortly before turning himself into the police on February 13, 2019. The rapper stated, a couple of months ago, I lost my two brothers by violence, and now the system wants to find justice. Unfortunately, a lot of rumors and lies are being said, but no worries, God is with me and my brother YNW Bortlin. We want y'all to remember, it's a YNW family. The post also contained a photo of Melly with the two deceased. But what exactly happened to the two men that night? Who killed them? And why has an answer not been found over four years down the line? As you'll soon come to find out, the investigation would go on to reveal some shocking truths. At approximately 4.35 a.m. on the morning of October 26, 2018, his associate, Cortland, YNW Bortland Henry arrived at Miramar Memorial Hospital in a Jeep Compass. Their two friends, YNW Juvie and Sack Chaser, are dead on arrival in the car. They'd been shot in what the other two claimed was a drive-by attack. Sack Chaser was found in the front passenger seat with gunshot wounds to his head and torso. In the right rear passenger seat, Juvie was found, with shots to his back and head. There is no denying that drive-by shootings happen, particularly in the world of rap. But the event that occurred sometime in the early hours of October 26th did not look like one. Moreover, the last time Sack Chaser and Juvie were seen alive was leaving a studio in the Jeep Compass with Melly and Bortlin. As the investigation into the two deaths continued, evidence against Melly and Bortland began adding up. The crime scene did not suggest a drive-by shooting. The back seat of the car, as well as the center console, were completely covered in blood. This would be the case for any shooting. But importantly, the place Bortland described as the location of the drive-by attack did not look like one at all.
The location of the shooting, which was in a remote area, was littered with spent bullet casings. Some rested on broken glass, but the glass did not pertain to the Jeep Compass. Ballistic testimony also suggested that the bullets traveled through the car. Therefore, the angles from which the gunmen were firing did not pertain to a typical drive-by shooting. Moreover, projectile analysis determined it to be unlikely for the bullets to have hit the SUV while in motion. In fact, the autopsies on Juvie and Sack Chaser suggested that the shots came from the left rear passenger side, where Melly had been caught on tape sitting when the party left the studio earlier that evening. In fact, police were not able to find any evidence matching Bortland's account of the event. Interestingly, about two weeks after being arrested for the double homicide, YNW Melly and Bortland were also named suspects in a completely different case. On February 17, 2017, an off-duty officer by the name of Gary Chambliss was shot in Gifford, Florida. At around 9.30 p.m., gunfire erupted between the 4300 and 4400 blocks of 28th Avenue. Groups of people were gathered in the vicinity. According to an official report, a bottle was thrown at a passing car, and the driver responded by firing gunshots, prompting at least one person in the other group to return fire. A stray bullet took Officer Chambliss's life. Once Bortlett and Melly had been arrested, Police revealed that they suspected the two rappers were part of the group that shot the bullet, which killed Chambliss that night. Information on the investigation into Chambliss's death in connection to Melly and Bortland is still pending. On the 6th of March, 2019, YNW Melly pleaded not guilty to the charges against him in the Juvian Sack Chaser homicide case. He would remain in prison until the beginning of his trial in 2023. On the 30th of November, 2021, Melly's trial was postponed for March 2022. Then it was postponed again until May and then June 2022. The trial officially started on June 12, 2023. But the trial really became known in late 2022 when a Florida judge ruled that the prosecution could seek the death penalty against Melly. This decision would later be overturned. But then in July 2022, prosecutors would once again ask for the death penalty to be considered as a possible sentence. In the end, it was agreed that the jury could recommend a death sentence at the end of the trial. There was an 8-4 to four vote in favor of it. So far, the trial has been shrouded in mystery, with both the accused and the prosecution raising a large number of questions for the jury to consider. One of the major questions being asked is what Melly's motive could have been for the killings. After all, both Juvie and Sack Chaser were very close friends of the rappers. It has been revealed, however, that there were tensions in the group over the estates of Sack Chaser and Juvie. Supposedly, the friend group had arguments over how money would be distributed among them, with the prospect of large amounts of cash coming in, according to the complaint filed on behalf of YNW Sack Chaser's estate. The complaint also made a sinister suggestion. When there are less people splitting up the prospective money, the people on the receiving end will get more. The prosecution are focusing on proving that a drive-by was staged by Melly and Bortland. According to them, at 4.02 a.m., the day of the murders, Melly exited the Jeep Compass and shot at the car to stage a drive-by. By this point, Juvie and Sack Chaser were already dead. Also, according to the prosecution, a probable motive for the killings would be to benefit, promote, and further the interest of a criminal gang. However, although it is known that Nellie was at some point affiliated with the Bloods, there is no current relevant evidence pointing in this direction. Moreover, exactly how the murders would have benefited the gang is also unclear. On the flip side, Melly's defense team are arguing that the investigation into the murders was not carried out properly. 
More specifically, in the case of Y.N.W. Bortland, whose home was never searched. Additionally, it was Bortland's account that was proven as false, and he had gunpowder residue on his hands. There is a lack of evidence, there is a conflict in the evidence, and the evidence itself, and the investigation itself. Melly's attorney, David Howard, was quoted as saying, Do you know what does require motive? a young man to wake up one day and decide that he's going to kill two of his best friends. Best friends that he grew up with. Best friends that he hangs out with. Best friends who he lives with. Best friends whose career he was trying to launch alongside his own. They have no reason for why he would do this because there is no reason. And if there is no reason, it doesn't make sense. But in opposition to Howard's words, YNW Juvie and Sack Chaser's families believed Melly to be guilty. In an interview, Juvie's mother said, Melly came to pick my son up that night, and I never seen or heard from my son again. Adding that if Melly is found guilty, she too would want him to face the death penalty. Juvie's father similarly said, an eye for an eye. Old Testament. I think he deserves it. They was on their way, like, to do big things, and it just got cut short. Uh, this tragedy. Everybody that's around still trying to pick up the pieces. Like, a lot of families got broken with this situation. Recently, a DNA expert took the stand, admitting that YNW Melly's DNA was only found on the rear driver's side door handle of the car and not on any items found inside the vehicle. A shooting reconstruction expert, Sergeant Williams, also recently concluded that the shooting happened from inside the vehicle. This further established YNW Bortland's testimony of a drive-by shooting as false. Moreover, the shooting was only done by one person with one gun, and not multiple individuals. It all happened at close range, with the firearm having been as close as just nine inches away from Juvie's face. Sergeant Williams was quoted saying, My determination is that it was not a drive-by shooting. Moreover, when asked whether it could have been Bortland who was in the driver's seat, who took the shots, Williams answered, that he would have to have an arm like Inspector Gadget for that to occur. The trial saw many twists and turns, but its most surprising discovery by far was a video depicting Melly's hiding in a suitcase. My name is Melly, and I'm going to turn myself in, but I'm in a suitcase because these brothers are arresting me, and I have to get on a private jet, and I don't want them to see me. The video, which was presented as evidence in the latter part of the trial, the rapper can be heard saying that he will be turning himself into police. Melly goes on to say that he was being pursued by police at the time on the video, and that the reason he was hiding was in order to not get arrested. The day after the video was recorded, Melly did indeed turn himself in. So why did he hide in the first place? Allegedly, the rapper wanted to avoid the bad publicity following an arrest. On the 22nd of July, 2023, after 19 days of hearing arguments, the judge on YNW Melly's case declared a mistrial. This decision came after the members of the jury found themselves deadlocked and unable to reach a unanimous decision. We are somewhat disappointed that Melly is not walking out the door with us. The mistrial will result in another trial being scheduled eventually. It also buys Melly and his team time to polish their arguments. At the same time, law enforcement have also been granted time to find more evidence. What do you think really happened on October 26th? Do you think Y&W Melly is guilty? Let us know your opinions below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found our video engaging. Your support is what keeps us going. So make sure you hit the notification bell in order to not miss out on any of our new content. Until next time, stay safe 
and we'll see you next time on The Decoder.